power and on the motherboard itself you'll see in the corner the little light painted notch down in the bottom right hand corner of the blue and then you see it there on the white where it says IDE2 that's indicating your power strip for the uh, correct positioning okay now we're going to throw in Hook it up and same thing. It's got the strip, and when you plug it into the devices, they almost always go where the, um, the the with the strip pointing towards the power supply where you, where you plug in the actual power for the item. Okay, now we're gonna open. Nice little creative prodigy PCI sound and pop that in now where this is again pay attention sometimes that first cut will throw you off and don't don't pay too much attention to it it's really the back one and you've got to know your cards but the top slot oops sorry guys I'm losing this out again This top slot here is an AGP port. Right now, we're, this video actually comes with onboard video, so we're just going to use it for now. Okay, these three blue ones are what they call PCI, which is what this bad boy is going to plug into. In fact, I'll go ahead and leave that stood up. Find an available port. You get it lined up. Sometimes a metal plate will mess you up a little bit. And there it is. It's plugged in. Then you've got over here. It's kind of hard to see in the video. Bless you, sissy. Thank you. You got holes for the screws to tighten them down and maintain them. Okay, so. screw after working at it I think yeah this one's a little big Put the wrong size screw here no baby I got bunches of them for days Okay, now the card is in there all solid, and it's not going nowhere. And so far, we look like that. There we are. Now, I know some of you are looking, what board has onboard sound? That's right, I disabled it, the onboard sound and the onboard joystick. We're going to run simply off of this card remember to turn it off in the BIOS otherwise it will cause you terrible headaches <coughs> excuse me okay next we will go ahead and put in our smooth mouth DVD burner Okay, we're going to get it slipped in the top slot, right where we had the other one. And I normally set them about flush with this extra plate. Again, it's got the holes in there, as you can see. So it's kind of like a real easy help point, I guess. Okay, now I'm going to get some screws.
Again, I'm sorry for the poor quality of doing this myself in the office with the tripod. Yeah, a little easier shots for you guys if I had somebody running the camera. But what are you going to do, right? Now they do have holes for four screws. I never do. Two, I normally just run two kind of diagonal like this. As you can see, one there, and one there. Okay, now same thing with the cable. It normally doesn't matter which one of the two ends you use. I normally use this one. That way, there's always a freed up one that I can kind of tuck away. Okay. Now that we've got that part done, fill that cable up. Next comes power supply. You know, this one, this particular case is a little hard work because it normally there's four holes on the deal itself. Well, this one has it, but in a swing away style play. You want to do the center screw. And this one swings out Come on, and pulls out. Now, let's see, set our screw down, don't want to lose that. We're going to take the power supply. You'll notice four holes on the plate, one of which is not quite square. On the power supply, you'll find the same. screws put in them. tighten that one all the way down yet so I still got a little slack to be able to adjust the plate to line up the other three holes That's never any good. Okay, we're back. Let's try this again. We just had to get done taking this thing apart. Get the stupid screw out of it that I dropped. But right, we're back on schedule. We'll try it for round two. There's three. There's three. And here comes lucky number four. 